Kendricks Lamaze Brown. All right, so I was born in Dothan, Alabama, a small town. I was only there for the first six years of my life. And because my dad was in the military at the time, we moved around a bunch until I got here in Norfolk, Virginia, was where I was living when I first came here in 2001, sixth grade. And pretty much I've been in this area since then. I first started playing basketball as soon as I could walk, maybe even before that. And basketball made me feel alive. It was like a safe haven. I wanted to be in the NBA as long as I could remember. I went up to Williamsburg where I had a full ride basketball scholarship at William & Mary. Then I did grad school up at VCU where I coached in basketball. Getting the scholarship, a D1 scholarship, was, was always the big goal. Got that scholarship offer summer before my senior year in high school. As I progressed through college, my hopes of going pro diminished. <laughs> Should start getting more realistic. As far as the NBA, going pro professional in general, there was always the option of going overseas to go play pro. What stopped me from playing? Ultimately, I stopped me. <laughs> I ended up getting a contract to go play in Bulgaria. Right before I was supposed to leave the team, they, they had a whole new coach and ownership and everything, and the new regime wanted a different player. And so that fell through. Sad as it might sound, I guess I don't know, something died in me. I didn't have that same fire to, to keep playing. Honestly, I didn't know what to do at that time. And that's when I just, I started coaching because it seemed like the next, lo next logical step and everyone was saying, oh, you should coach, you know the game so well. At that point, I was 23 going on 24, which isn't that old, but me at that time, looking around, I guess, to my peers and everything and thinking, all right, this, like something has to shake and this basketball thing isn't panning out. Let me go do something that will put me on a, a path to be successful in terms of how success is traditionally defined. So the, the first, I guess, sort of career change was from playing basketball to coaching it. I mean, like I said earlier, I did the coaching thing because it seemed like the logical thing to do. And everyone around me, like the coaches that I played for, thought that I would be good at it. And I started doing it. I, I coached high school um, here locally. I coached like AU, and then I went up to VCU where I was a grad assistant. And while I, I have fond memories of that time, and I met some great people and some friends that I feel like they'll be friends for the rest of my life, I wasn't I wasn't happy. And looking back on it, I think um, like my whole life with basketball, I was doing something that I was passionate about, and I think I sort of maybe took that for granted or didn't realize what a great thing it was to be able to do what you're passionate about every day. That's what led me on this big journey of self-exploration and spiritual exploration, which one way or another led me to art. I was able to find passion again. Started off with photography and, and found acting, as well as painting and music. Just art in general has become uh, my focus. So it's like Mr. Ought To, which is like, ought to like what you ought to do like you ought to do this you ought to do that what you're supposed to do you know what I'm saying oh, according to society's standards and it's uh, it's the idea of of putting yourself through strain because you're trying to conform to what so what you're supposed to do one of my favorite books the alchemist one of the first books that I read when I when I got out of college and things started going south and I started this transition, uh, one of the quotes from there is pretty popular is that when you, when you want something with all of your heart, all of the universe conspires to help you get it. Strangely enough, it was the, the spiritual exploration that led me to acting. So I started taking acting classes around this time two years ago in Norfolk. And I wasn't so sure about it. Maybe about halfway into the class is when our instructor pulled me to the side and let me know that he felt like he saw something in me and that I had this natural talent that he wanted to help me as much as possible. At that point, I didn't really believe in myself that much in terms of being in that new field. And so having someone who was an experienced actor say that to me, it gave me this vote of confidence. Another thing that, that drew me to acting was the requirement to empathize with other people in terms of trying to see the world from someone else's perspective. That, that makes me feel like I'm doing something that's worthwhile and something that's needed. You know, trying to understand someone else, obviously. A lot of things that are going on, 
I think in everyone's personal lives as well as on a large scale with everything that's going on in the world, it comes from a lot of not seeking to understand another person. I wouldn't have done anything differently because where I am in my life right now, while I may not be exactly where I want to be in terms of career success, I'm happy. I have faith in things turning out um, for the best no matter how they shake out. And so to get to this moment where I am now, I know that all the other stuff had to happen. And so I'm grateful, even though it was tough at the time, you know, I'm grateful for everything that happened. I want to say thank you to you guys. Going through this process, I feel like in maybe a couple of days, I'll be able to have some hindsight. I'll appreciate it even more. But going through this process of telling my story, you know, I realized that we all have the ability to tell our own stories, especially when it comes to our past and how we look at things. I could easily have, when things went south, continued to tell that story of it being this terrible thing. But I got to the point where I was able to tell a different story, a story of, of growth and redemption.